Okay. So now we are getting to our deadline for turning this in for a presentation critique. So at this point, I'm just trying to get it looking like I want uh, in kind of a quick way. So I'm going to delete these boulders just using the lasso. And I'm going to not zoom in more than 200% because this isn't for making it print ready yet. This is just for posting for our presentation critique in class. And yeah, there's going to be little things, little wonkiness that can be better. And I will get to that. But first, I need to finish putting all my elements in. So what's left? Now, I have the licorice trees, right? But before I put those in, I'm just going to quickly play with the adjustments of these waffles. Maybe even of the rock candy. So let's go to the rock candy and then let's do some image adjustments. Oh, let's merge all the rock candy together because I internally composited that. Okay, so now image, start with levels. Image adjustments, the color, the lighting. It's going to make it all more believable. So I want it to be a little bit brighter? Or do I want to be a little bit darker? I think a little bit brighter. Do I want to limit their shadows somewhat? I think I do. Just a little bit. Because there's some pretty dark shadows there. Do I want to limit their highlights somewhat? Maybe a tiny bit. Okay, next. This is my favorite color balance. The temperature. Kind of the way they're lit. Ah, just by warming up those mid-tones. Making them a little bit more red helps them s sit under this pink sky a lot better. I don't want to overdo it, but that is helpful. And then with the highlights, I'm actually going to add some cools to the highlights. And to the shadows, maybe just a little bit of cool. And does that help? little bit. Now I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to go to hue saturation. I can play with shifting these bright colors. Ah, oh, that's kind of nice. So I don't have reds next to reds as much. And then I can actually dim the saturation a little bit. So they're just a little bit more grayed out. I think that helps. Then I might go back to levels just to limit those shadows, which sometimes when you do a hue shift, shadows and highlights can change depending on the, the spectrum of that color. Do I like that better? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, so now let's go to the waffles, the background one first, and just really quickly go to adjustments, go to levels, play with the mid-tone. I want this to brighten up a little bit and for the shadows to intensify it's going to have the most contrast in the foreground and we're moving into the foreground now with these waffles color balance let's warm up the midtones let's cool down the shadows We'll deepen them a little bit. Let's warm up the highlights. And then hue saturation. Just shift the hues a little bit. See if there's something there that presents itself. And then I want to brighten my mid-tone highlights a little bit after all those color shifts. So I'm going to go to my levels again and then just brighten that highlight. Okay, now that actually helps a whole lot for that waffle. So now we're going to go to this foreground waffle. Treating them separately even though they merge into each other. Start with levels. Same kind of things, brighten the midtones, 
deep in the shadows just a tiny bit. Go to color balance. Warm up the highlights. This is what I like to do. Cool down the shadows. Everyone's composite is different. Warm up the highlights. And then go to back to levels. Brighten it a little bit more. It's really defined. Okay, now we want some of these foreground trees and elements to overlap. So with my licorice now, I wish I had a better transition into the bottom of the licorice, but maybe I can do that with internal compositing after I cut it out. I'm going to use my magic wand. I'm going to select all the white, but I'm going to make sure that contiguous is checked because if it's not checked, it's also going to select all the highlights inside the licorice, and that would not be good. So deselect. Now with contiguous, select it. Then go to select and mask. And this time I'm going to take my feather down to just 0.4 or 0.3 because I want this to look really sharp. And I might add to it, hold down shift and add these areas. It will give me a more defined shape because these are the shadows, kind of the red shadows of the licorice. Okay, now I can hit delete and there's a slight feather to it. And I can use my lasso with a slight feather. Not much at all because this is the immediate foreground. And cut into it with my own shapes. Now I'm going to play with my direct adjustments. Oops. There we go. Command Z is always there if we need it. It's comforting. When you reach up for that delete button and you hit something else instead. Okay, now some direct adjustments are going to help this feel like a foreground element. You don't have to take the colors that have been given to you. Clean up this edge. All right, so start with levels. Do I want to brighten it? Do I want to darken it? I think I want to brighten it, but maybe deepen the shadows just a tiny bit. Very similar to the waffles. Maybe even limit the highlights somewhat. Now image adjustment, lots of repetition, color balance. Let's try warming it up so it's really in the foreground, in the midtones, and then really cooling down the shadows so it has more dimensionality to it. And then the highlights warming those up. How did that help? Yes, that helps to, to make it look more solid. Now if I go to hue saturation, I can play with really shifting the hues. And yeah, it seems like Pushing it a little bit more towards the orange is helpful with under this lighting. I can play with saturating it more, but I don't think that's helpful. Desaturating it is not helpful, so maybe just goose the saturation a tiny bit. And now for levels, I want to limit the shadows because those are a little deep. We're going to be learning with Dodge and Burn how to spot treat shadows with our next assignment, but here we're just doing them kind of overall. So it's going to limit how dark those shadows can get. Okay, and then if I need to work on the edges, 
anything that's too much of a focal point. The foreground is where the eye is going to look first. So that's where you want your kind of cleanest edges. And it might help to just select all the empty space around and do a select and mask with just a very slight feather so that you can decide how much to bite away. But I'm zoomed in too much here, so I'm getting too into the weeds. Okay. So what does this need? It needs my black licorice. And I might use this in lots of different ways. But I also, don't forget, have my guides. And I can adjust what the actual composition is of my finished landscape at any time. This shows me my 11 by 14 intention. And I've been building it up to be bigger than that. It's always nice to have that option. But there might be other things I can do. I think I like it about there. Okay, now my black licorice. Let's just cut around all sides of it. Select and mask, very slight feather, 0.3 pixel, like almost nothing. But it will help with that little glow. You can see I still want a very defined edge there. And then here, I'm going to need a little bit stronger. And I think, just because that back edge is kind of blurry, I'm going to actually want to cut out my own where it's still in focus. Like this. And then instead of doing the whole adjustments, I can always just try what's called auto-tone. And that will balance out the histogram for me, but it doesn't always do what I want. But in the foreground, that's more likely than not. And then I'm going to show you something kind of cool, because this is mostly grayscale. If I go to hue saturation and adjustments on something that's grayscale, and I click on colorize, I can force this to be monochromatic in a different hue. So if I want a little bit of blue in it, I can do that. I just have to click colorize first. Yes, so what Colorize will do will shift it to that kind of monochrome way of looking. <laughs> okay, then I, what I think I want to do is use this as a transition. I like that raspberry there, but use it as a transition into my licorice tree. It's tricky. Maybe like that. Let me turn off my guides. and maybe internally composite it. So make a duplicate of it, flip that. Rotate it, let's see, how can I make this work? Yeah, like that. So it's hanging off the other side. Tuck it behind. And then cut out from it. So just like collage with scissors, kind of find the, the shapes that work for you, that sell your illusion, and you have full control of each pixel. That's what Photoshop gives to us. So many options.